Uh, I'm Bruce Taggart and I'm a mandolin builder and a fiddle builder and a banjo neck builder and an instrument repairman. I was a musician and interested in the banjo. Couldn't afford a real fancy banjo, so I built one. I found a pot, or the rim, from a, a fellow who had one with no neck on it and um, built the neck. In a former lifetime, you know, bluegrass uh, music uh, was a big part of my life. Uh, the Earl Scruggs How to Play the Bluegrass Banjo book. In the back section of that it says how to build a bluegrass banjo. So that was what I used <laughs> to influence me. Came across a couple old violins about this time. And they were both broken and needed work. And I took one to Ole Dahl in Bloomington, who was the only fiddle repairman in the area. I could tell what he had done, you know, and I thought, well, that looks easy. I'll try my hand on this second one I had. And so I started developing an interest in violins or fiddles. And then started looking for fiddles at yard sales and auctions and gradually acquired a few that needed work and learned to repair them. And that sort of evolved into fiddle building, which is what I'm doing right at the moment, I guess. Most of my work I do here at these different workstations, and this is my carving workstation. I have this really cool old vise here. So I make these little platforms. I have this one with a, sort of a violin-shaped one. When I'm carving the backs or the tops, I can put them in there and they'll stay. I can carve on them without having to put a clamp on them. I start with selecting a nice piece of maple that's fairly nicely quarter sawn and tracing the outline of a violin on the inside of it. And at the point where the bridge is going to be, I drill a hole. It's approximately 10 millimeters deep from the inside and carve the inside of the instrument. I've tried to match the wood. If you notice here, one side goes up, the flame, I'm talking about the curl, one side goes up, the other side goes down. So I've tried to continue that going down theme with the angular uh, deflection of the curl on the ribs. So when it comes to the neck, it will be cocked back uh, a few degrees and then this continuation of the same curl continues on up the neck. So there's this flow of the grain of the wood that it's all sort of, it all ties in together. How they sound under your chin is totally different than how the rest of the world hears them. I want it to play easy and to have adequate power, but yet possess a, a sweet tone, great dynamics. And then it would be nice if it were a work of art, aesthetically pleasing to look at. Tone and playability and aesthetics in that order.